Hello, it's David Allen, and you are watching Sporting Icons. Right, there's an article here, and I'll put it in the description box, as always, for you guys to go have a read of it yourself. And within this article, Anthony Joshua, he gave his all-time three greatest heavyweights of all time. Now, I haven't seen the show that, that um, he said this on, which was on Top Gear. I used to watch Top Gear a lot. I'm not really into cars or anything like that. We, you know, the classic motor cars and the uh, very fast sports cars that they do on this show. I used to watch it with Jeremy Clarkson, Richard Hammond, James May and that. But obviously, since these guys left the show, I haven't watched it since. I don't know if these guys are back in it. Don't know. Either way, Anthony Joshua was on Top Gear and he listed his three greatest heavyweights of all time and it was a little bit surprising to be honest so i thought i'd do this video because i know it's a great talking point for a lot of you guys obviously you drop me your thoughts in the comment section below as to who you believe is the greatest three heavyweights of all time now anthony joshua did he choose them because he believes that they are the greatest it's difficult to say and it'd be quite hard to say that that's what he'd done because obviously for a lot of them he wouldn't really have seen them but Ultimately, who knows his real reason? Maybe it's a case of what they went through in life. This could be one of the reasons as well as. Anyway, so his top three. Number three, Iron Mike Tyson. Now, Mike Tyson, former undisputed heavyweight champion of the world and the youngest ever heavyweight champion of the world. Um, quite a turbulent kind of character, I suppose. You know, he got ripped off. He's very fiery and he intimidated a lot of opponents before they even got in the damn ring. So he won the fight before the bell even went um, on like a lot of occasions. Not the biggest guy in the world, but had a real, real reputation as a damn animal in that ring. As a kid, Mike Tyson was frightening to me. He really was, you know, this very small kid seeing this guy wearing these uh, black shorts and black boots in a foul, foul mood, looking like he wants to rip somebody's heart out in the middle of that ring and of course ultimately he did with Frank Bruno which uh, to my dismay it really was but Mike Tyson was brutal in his heyday things went downhill for him of course when he went to prison um, due to him raping that girl I don't know the details on that one but um, either way apparently he raped a girl he got put in prison for it and he converted to Islam and all this kind of thing and from then he had a pretty decent career when he come out but the the time that um, he was in prison, these were really his heydays. These were almost like his prime years before a lot of fighters, they hit their prime in like their 30s, right? Like early 30s. But for Mike Tyson, he seemed to hit his prime in his early 20s. Okay, but he lost a great chunk of momentum due to that. He come back and he wasn't quite the same. Um, he tried to be the same, but for whatever reason, he couldn't quite reach his full potential again. And especially to the in the tail end of his career, he was getting uh, beat up by virtual journeymen, really. But either way, Mike Tyson is definitely a legend of the sport. And for me, I would have him in my top three, which, um, you know, I'll give you guys my top three before I close this video. But anyway, I, Mike Tyson, is number three for Anthony Joshua. Number two, Muhammad Ali. Again, Muhammad Ali, not really somebody that I've seen a lot of the fights of. I'm not really one for going back watching old fights. Um, I'm not really too fussed by them. But the ones that I have seen, obviously... The two with Henry Cooper, um, George Foreman, Joe Fraser. These kind of ones, of course, I've seen. But I know more about Muhammad Ali in his personal life than what I do about his boxing career. So, of course, I can't really make too much judgment on it. But a lot of people, if you were to list a top 10, a top 5, or even a top 3, to not have Muhammad Ali in there, and most people probably have Muhammad Ali as number 1, not necessarily because he was the best, but because of what he went through. And you know what, it's a fair point, and everybody's entitled to their own opinion. But Muhammad Ali, outside of the ring, he was a controversial character, of course. Um, originally called uh, Cassius Clay, and then um, converted to Islam himself, and ultimately named himself Muhammad Ali. Or not, no, actually, I, I think uh, he was named Muhammad Ali for, for um, was it two prophets, Muhammad and Ali. So I don't know, is it Shia or Sunni? I, I have no idea about that. Anyway, um, so Muhammad Ali was outside of the ring a very, very controversial character, that's for sure. Very good-hearted person as well, but very, very disliked by a lot of the white people. So he was coming through a time of racism where boxing and racism was hand-in-hand, hand, but 
it was worse way before Muhammad Ali. Things were still terrible with Muhammad Ali. Um, when he won the gold at the Olympics, he threw the damn thing in the river because he'd come back like um, um, expecting some kind of hero's welcome. But because of the color of his skin, he wasn't broadly accepted. And a lot of people tuned in to watch Muhammad Ali or Cassius Clay originally just to lose because they didn't want this black guy becoming world champion. They didn't want this black guy, this very loud, cocky guy, clearly intelligent guy as well, doing well in the sport. They just didn't like it, but he rose above it. And of course he just took over boxing for a long, long time. And when most people think of boxing, they think Muhammad Ali. Um, and, and of course he's a guy who, if he had something in his heart, he just wore it on his sleeve. And that's pretty much what Muhammad Ali was. The war in Vietnam, I ain't going there. I ain't gonna fly over to somebody else's country and kill people that I don't know because the US government who don't like me because of the color of my skin, no, no, I ain't doing that. So of course, um, there was a bit of a uh, bird, should we say, with that one. So yeah, Muhammad Ali, very, very influential in a lot of boxes, even today. There's uh, so many fighters get into boxing because of Muhammad Ali, even today, so many years after he's long retired. But um, ultimately he died, of course, uh, with Parkinson's and all that kind of thing. So anyway, Anthony Joshua has Muhammad Ali as number two, but as number one, Jack Johnson. Um, very limited footage of Jack Johnson, him fighting. Um, of course, um, he was a black world champion. And when you talk about racism, boxers today who, sh who go around shouting to this day and all this kind of thing, swap shoes with Jack Johnson. Then you'll know the true definition of what it was to try and be a, an athlete with racism on your back everywhere you go. Jack Johnson, he even got arrested because he was with a white girl who eventually he married, but they put him in prison because they just wanted to accuse him of getting a white woman to sell her for prostitution. But that just wasn't true. The truth was that, um, you know, he wanted to marry this woman. He loved this woman. Now, Jack Johnson, he did antagonize the racists and Racism was extreme then. Listen, it's terrible today, but it was awful back then. Real, real bad back then. And Jack Johnson lived through that. And of course, you know, he got put in prison just because he loved the white girl. And they didn't like that. They didn't like interracial mingling, if you like. Um, but as I said, he used to poke a stick back at them. He used to drive around in a pretty decent car of the time just to poke a stick back, just to say, hey, listen, look what it is that I'm doing. You know, what are you doing with uh, your life? And they didn't like that. So these fighters who shout in to this day and all this kind of thing, trying to bring up racism because they just can't differentiate between boxing and racism. Like it still goes hand in hand. With Jack Johnson, it went hand in hand. Muhammad Ali and those all around that era and before it went hand in hand. Today, it's not that kind of era. But even like a lot of boxing fans today, they still can't separate it. They just can't. Uh, but... Jack Johnson lived through some horrible, horrible times. He really did. Um, so as I said, when fighters today shout around to this day, as they're shouting from the open window of their mansion with their very fast, expensive sports cars and their kids in private school. And, you know, they, they are with girls who are also not black, you know, but Jack Johnson wasn't allowed that. But yet these people want to still shout out to this day. And like uh, racism is a huge issue like it was then. It's still an issue. Listen, of course it is. But way back when, it really is. Um, so when you've got a very healthy bank balance and you're allowed to marry um, a woman of different color and your kids are in private school, very healthy bank balance, fast sports cars, huge house and properties and businesses and all this kind of thing. You're not really in, a, in like a real position to say something Jack Johnson, of course, is i mean i mean um of course he did die um a, a great number of years ago and president trump um he pardoned him for him going to prison um it's something that a lot of people felt that wasn't necessary but they did it for the family of jack johnson of course my um you've got um sylvester stallone there lennox lewis there deontay wilder there and that as well and um he has been pardoned it was a decent thing that the president did it did he do it for some kind of um popularity points listen maybe either way but he has been pardoned but jack johnson is number one for anthony joshua so there you have it he has mike tyson number three muhammad ali number two 
Jack Johnson as number one. Me personally, obviously you drop your thoughts below about who your top three are. Me personally, I'll probably have number three, Mike Tyson. Number two, Lennox Lewis. Number one, Frank Bruno. Not necessarily because they were the greatest ever, that they could beat everybody before them. Not at all. They were just the heavyweights that I loved growing up. That's all it was. So that's my three. You drop me yours in the comment section below. Click the thumbs up to this video. And of course, subscribe. Catch you all on the next video.